Well, hello, my fellow viewers. JRV96 here, bringing you a P3D flight in which we're going to debut my first ever flight in the Boeing 787 10, in which we're going to fly from Newark Liberty International Airport to Amsterdam Schiphol Airport in the Netherlands. So the flight is going to take about close to seven hours, in which we'll be traveling 3,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean where along the way we'll be flying across the Atlantic, going towards Ireland, the UK, and into the Netherlands. So this add-on is the Quality Wing 787-10. So as you can see, I have flown their eight and their nine models in FSX. So this is gonna be my very first flight in the 10 model, which this is the longest 787 variant there is. As I check the length from Wikipedia, at 224 feet long, this aircraft is actually longer than the 777-200, but shorter than the 777-300. So as you can see, this is a beautiful looking airplane right there. So, with that being said, we're going to jump right into the cockpit. So now, we're in the cold and dark configuration, so I might as well get the airplane powered up. So what we'll do is we'll turn on the external power, get the battery switch on, and I'll align the adheres. So as you can see, the overhead panel layout is kind of similar to that of the 777 with some minor differences. So one obvious one is the IRS. And the PMDG 777, you used to have this one button, whereas in the 78, you have two knobs. So now we're going to turn on the APU generator switch in which we're not going to turn on the APU yet until we get closer to boarding and I'm just going to run through my flows so battery test test that flight deck door power we can turn that on and then arm the emergency lights window heat I'm going to leave that off for now in which I'll turn it on right before we push back so Engine hydraulics will turn them on and then also demand will just leave that on as well Passenger signs. I'm going to leave that off in case if we need to get fuel and also we're going to do our Cockpit voice recorder test fire overheat test Looks good engine mode selectors are normal and Fuel pumps will leave them off for now and what I'll do is I'll leave the lights off for now and, so, and then we'll turn it, off, turn it on about five minutes before pushback. So bulk cargo heat is on. We'll turn on the recir recirculation fans. And then we'll turn on the trim air as well. And then what I'll do is I'll leave the packs off for now. All right. So while I do all of this, now I just need to set the parking brakes. While I'll do all of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call for catering. And then once after catering is done, I'm going to call for boarding using the GSX add-on. So now we're going to go right, in, right to our flows from left to right. Test our oxygen. Looks good to me. And I'll do the same thing from the first officer side as well. And then also what I'm going to do is set up the, the displays in which what we'll do is that we'll turn on water or well, traffic is on already by default. And what I'll do is basically change this to ND or actually this button I meant to push. So that way I like to have the multifunctional display cover the entire screen and then the ECAST mess messages on the other side. Now, what I'll do is we'll hold off on the mode control panel for now. And then we're going to come down towards the pedestal. I'll get to the FMS in just a second. Speed brakes are fully extended. Thrust levers idle. Flaps are up. Fuel control switches are in the cutoff position. And then since this is going to be a Vatson flight, there's no ATC online for Newark. So I'll just throw in 122.8. So we'll put that active on COM1. Boston Center 
is online at the time of this recording so we'll put in 134.7 on standby so that way once we're climbing out of Newark we will get in contact with Boston Center so mics are good and pretty much transponder mode we're gonna leave that on standby for now but before we push back we're gonna set this to mode C all right flight deck door access we'll leave leave that on auto transponder code since we're not going to be flying VFR we'll just change the squat code to 2200 and that's pretty much it in terms of the pedestal check now the catering truck should be there already so as you can see looking outside I just need to open up doors number two and four so we're going to go ahead and open these doors and then at the same time, what I'll do to get ahead of GSX is that I'll open up the cargo doors as well in preparation for boarding. Now, for some reason, GSX is not using the jetway, which I kind of find pretty odd to me. So, oh well, it's not a deal breaker. So I'm just going to open up these four, three doors right here. And that should shut up GSX for now. Now in the meantime, we're gonna go right into the FMS. And we're gonna go to the identification page in which this is a Boeing 787-10. We are utilizing the current Air Rack 2010. And we're gonna go to the position initial page in which usually what's different about the quality wing 787 is that unlike in the triple seven where you have to set your inertial position this is already set for you in this case so that way when you turn on the adheres the adheres have already aligned themselves so as you can see right there then now i'm going to go to the route page so i have downloaded the flight plan on simbrief so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the route that we have. See if that works. And as you can see, it does. So we're flying from Newark Liberty Airport to Amsterdam, in which I checked the meets are. The winds are coming out from the northeast, so we're going to utilize runway four left. And that was pretty fast in terms of the catering. It looks like they probably finished loading all the food in the plane. So it looks like the rear door is done, but rear door number two is still loading as we speak. Pretty interesting. And it looks like they're done as well. So I'm just going to close that door. And flight number is going to be United Flight 70, which is a real world flight. And then for the route itself, I'm just going to go to the next page, make sure that the routes that we have matches with our flight plan. So now I'm going to execute the flight plan. Departure. We're going to utilize runway four left in which we're going to fly to Newark for departure. And then now I'm going to go to the legs in which I have to do some adjustments to the FMS. So I actually tell you what, I don't need to because the oceanic waypoints are already there. Interesting. And then for the arrivals, so for the arrival that we're going to use, we're going to use the LAMS. From what I had filed on SimBrief, we're going to utilize the LAMS 2 Alpha arrival. I'm not going to specify what runway we're going to use yet since it's still too early to tell. So we'll figure that out as we get closer to the airport. Now we're going to go to the performance page. So as you can see, this, these are our performance calculations. I've already loaded the airplane well beforehand utilizing the Quality Wing 787 dispatch program. So as you can see, I'm just checking to make sure that the payloads are correct. So our zero fuel weight should be 385,600 pounds. So I'm looking at SimBrief to make sure all of these figures are correct. So, 385.6, I'm just going to check how much fuel we have, make sure I have loaded the airplane properly. 
So right now we're at 92,000 pounds. Reserves is going to be 4,800 pounds. So I'm going to throw in 4.8. So we'll put that in. And then our cruising altitude is going to be flight level 370. So we'll put that in. Cost index kind of low. So around 15. So I'll just put it in anyways. And then now we're going to go hit execute. And then now we're going to go to the thrust limiter page. So as you can see, probably there isn't a need to derate the engines at all since we'll be at 96% N1, which is good enough for me. And then for the takeoff page, so let's see, actually the takeoff reference, got to put that in. So Newark's winds are 020 at 15. So we're going to put that in. So we're going to have... I don't know why it says tailwind, but normally we're going to take off into the wind. And then our V-speeds are already set. Kind of pretty high. I would probably go, in this case, I'll probably go flaps 15 for takeoff. So that way our V-speeds are a little bit more manageable. And then the CG trim is going to be 17. It's located in the MFD. But as you can see, that has been set for takeoff. So we have our B speed set. And everything else checks out. All right, so as you can see, boarding is underway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, at least set up the mode control panel. So what I'll do is we'll turn on the flight directors, turn on the auto throttles. We're going to fly a V2 plus 10. So I'm going to go to the performance page, figure out what, what was my V2 speed. So we'll go back to the FMS and check that out. So around 158 knots, we'll do roughly 170 knots on the departure. So we'll set that. I'm not going to set up the LNAV yet because for this departure procedure, we're gonna to need to get radar vectors. So I'm going to set up the initial on course heading for the Port of Newark 4. So it looks like I'm gonna set this to 060. And then we'll turn on our heading select. And then for the altitude, since ATC is not online, I'm just gonna put in the final cruising altitude of flight level 370. So we'll get that set up and VNAV I can turn on for now. I'll just hold off on the LNAV until we get cleared direct to merit in that case. So last couple of things, checklist. I checked the oxygen, flight instruments, heading, altimeter. The only thing I did not set was the barometric pressure, which is 2995. So, in this case, I just got to go back to Active Sky, 2995. So, we're going to go ahead and put that in. All right, so everything else is set up oxygen flight instruments, parking brakes, fuel control switches, passenger signs. Since we're not going to get any refueling, we'll just go ahead and turn on the seatbelt signs. And then MCP is already set up. And then the takeoff speeds are good. FMS is already set up. Taxi and takeoff briefing, which is the last thing we're going to do. So we're going to pop up our Navigraph chart. And now we are at Terminal Charlie at Newark Gate Charlie 126. So what we're going to do is that we're going to push back from here with the tail facing east in which we're gonna to go to runway four left, in which we're gonna make probably a left turn onto Romeo Juliet, then a right turn on Alpha, and then come all the way down on Alpha to the very end of the taxiway, and make a left turn onto Alpha Alpha, where we will depart from the runway. Now, as for the departure procedure, we're going to fly the Newark four departure. So in this case, this is for runways four left, right, and one one. We do have takeoff minimums in which it is standard.
but then there's an ATC climb of 500 feet per nautical mile to 2,500 feet. So in that case, we're going to have to climb at least 2,000 to 2,500 feet per minute, mainly because we want to avoid overflying Teterboro Airport that's just north of Newark. So on departure, we're going to fly runway heading to 500 feet, and then we're going to do a climbing right turn to a heading of 060 until we reach the 4 DME of the localizer in this case. Then, once when we get there, we'll do a climbing left turn to a heading of 290 degrees, in which we'll cross the 214 radio of the Teterboro VOR westbound at or above 2500, and then climb and maintain 3000. So 3000 feet looks like it's our top altitude for the sit. But other than that, ATC can obviously change that for, for whatever reason. And then once when we're there, then we're going to get radar vectors to Merit, which is going to be our first waypoint that we'll fly. And then afterwards, we'll expect flight level 370 within 10 minutes after departure. So that is the departure procedure for the Newark 4, and also how we're going to get to runway 4 left. So I'm just going to hide the Navigraph chart. So we still got a long way to go in terms of boarding. So... I will see you guys when we're ready for pushback. Well, welcome back, my fellow viewers. Two things I've noticed in this recording in which, number one, I forgot to put sound on OBS, which is why the first 20 minutes of the recording was rather quiet. So I do apologize for that, my fellow viewers. And also, for some odd reason, GSX must have froze while I was boarding, so I had to restart the program and we'll be on our way in terms of pushback. So what I'll do is I'll turn on the rest of the switches, get our APU started, and then we'll also turn on the hydraulics alongside with the window heat. And then we'll also turn on our fuel pumps as well. I think we do have fuel in the center tank, so I'm just gonna double check if I do. It looks like we do have fuel in the center tank, but not by much. So I'll just have the center fuel pumps on. And what I'll do is we'll just turn the packs on as well, so that way we can provide some air for our passengers. And then also the last thing we need to do is we'll have to close the first door, in which it should be closing as we speak. So I'm just going to double check outside. So I need to close the door. Now it should close. Before start checklist. And then I'm also going to we have just closed the main cabin check door. the electronic panel for the APU. And for the duration of the flight. So this is the system page. Basically it'll tell you if the APU is running or not, which in that case it is. So we're going to go back to the and D page, as you can see, I'm still trying to get used to that 787 since it has been a while since I flew this aircraft. All right, so now pretty much the whole overhead panel looks good to me. Just turned on the nav lights, seatbelt signs are on, pretty much nothing else I've forgotten. And then I will double check with the built-in checklist for the airplane. So everything checks out. I've already did my taxi briefing and, Once again, and gentlemen, we're going like to, to call GSX for pushback. At this time, I'd like to direct your attention to the flight attendants while we review safety information about the 787. Your seatbelt should be fastened at this time. It is our policy that you keep your seatbelt fastened at all times while seated. The eight exits on the 787 are marked with the exit sign. Please locate the two exits nearest you, keeping in mind the nearest exits may be behind you. This aircraft has escaped path line and change of color. I'm indicating that reach the exit. Mask will appear from the above your seat. If you're traveling for someone needing assistance, put on your mask first and then offer assistance. Hello, Captain. We're ready your for pushback. Your mask is located in the or in some cases between your seat. If needed, it's like the vest just prior to exiting the aircraft by pulling the red tab from the front vest. A safety information card with more detailed instructions regarding this aircraft is in your seat pocket. All right, so locking gear. Pushback truck, truck, truck is there. Just gotta lower some volumes. Walk ahead to tamper with. 
Uh, looking on VASIM to see if there's anybody else online. So far, there's nobody online at Newark other than myself. All right, so let's see where we're going to push the airplane back. We're going to go, in this case, it's going to be nose, left, tail, right. Departure check completed. Bypass pin inserted. Release parking commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. All right, so now we are currently pushing back from the gate. I'm going to go ahead and get the right engine started first. Go ahead and it. Clear to start engines. Okay, Roger. starting engine. Clear to start engines. Start both engines. So also forgot to put the auto brakes to RTO. That has been fixed. Put the fuel control on run. All right, looks like the second engine is up and running. Just watching what GSX is doing with the pushback. And then what I will do is I'll start up engine number one. At the same time, what I'll do is I'll just set the TCAST to TARA. Okay, get the fuel control on run. Looks like the GSX is going to push me off on that taxiway right there. It looks like the guy has stopped. And the airplane should stop just about just a second. Waiting your confirmation for good engine start. All right, looks like we got good engine start on both engines, so we can go ahead and disconnect the pushback truck. At this point, we don't need the APU anymore, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it off. And we're gonna go through our before taxi checklist. Anti-ice, we don't need. Recall, so there's a little recall button right there. So there's no enunciators on the heat cast. All the brakes are set. I'm going to go ahead and Unlocking check the flight gear. controls in which we go to system, flight controls page. So as you can see, the systems are almost identical to that of the 777. As you can see, the checklist is identical to that of the 777. It's just that the 78, the way how you find those menus are laid out a little bit differently. But other than that, those are two very similar aircraft. Think about it. So we checked our flight controls. Flight controls work out pretty nicely. And then now we're gonna go to the checklist page once again. And the ground equipment is clear. So these guys should be out of our way. Then we're gonna go ahead and turn on the taxi light. And also we'll turn on our runway turn off lights Left is clear. as right well. Is clear. So everything checks out. And then now we're ready to taxi. So I'll just hide the checklist, then we'll be on our way. Oops, it looks like GSX is not done with what it's supposed to do. And I'll have my Navigraph chart, so that way I can track my position in, in the airport. So it looks like we pushed back on Taxiway Romeo Lima, so we're going to go to Taxiway Alpha in this case. I'm gonna go ahead and release the parking brakes and we'll be on our way. Yeah, it does take quite a, quite a bit of power just to get this aircraft moving, I'll tell you that. And now we're on our way. Actually, I'm supposed to go onto this taxiway in front of me and slightly off to my right. That's taxiway alpha. Somehow GSX pushed me off 
off the taxiway Bravo. In that case. And then this should be taxiway Alpha. Anyways, this is going to be a very lengthy taxi to the runway in which I'm going to skip this scene right there and I will see you guys when we are holding short of the runway. Welcome back my fellow fellow viewers. As you can see, we are almost at the very end of runway 4 left as you can see. I'm just going to make this right turn onto taxiway Alpha Alpha and what you're looking at is the FedEx cargo ramp off to our right. Now we're just going to jump right back into the cockpit and we'll make this left turn onto taxiway Alpha Alpha. Now for this departure procedure, since this is rather a tight one, I'm just going to keep the speed at around 170 to around 180 knots until the completion of the departure procedure so that way we don't overshoot our altitude and also overflying Teterboro Airport as well because for some reason this departure procedure, if you look at the FMS, it's not the way how it is laid out on the chart. So that's something to be aware of as well. Also, another thing I almost forgot to do was to set the flaps in which I set the flaps to 15. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and do my before takeoff flow in which we're gonna turn on our landing lights and turn off the taxi lights and turn on the strobes. And we're gonna verify the TCAS is set to TARA, which it is and we have traffic on as well. And pretty much everything checks out. So we're gonna take off by the Newark 4 departure and then I'll vector myself to Merritt. So I'm looking over here, there's nobody landing and there's nobody taking off from runway four left or four right at Newark. So we are good to go. Now we're going to taxi the airplane onto the runway. And then we will be out of here. Alright, so now we are going to be lining up with runway 4 left. Make sure that the whole airplane is lined up before we take off. Yeah, for some reason the FMS is kind of weird when it comes to the Newark 4 departure. That's why it's showing this half 8 right there. But no matter, I'm going to hand fly it anyways. All right, so we're going to advance the throttle to about 40% in one. And we'll also activate toga mode. Check for us. All right, airspeed's yes, alive. Sir. We do Eight have months. almost a 20 knot Check. headwind, so that's going to definitely work in our favor. B1. Rotate. B2. And we're airborne. Positive rate of climb. Gear Positive is coming rate. up. Gear up. All right, so we just passed 500 feet. I'm going to make a right turn to a heading of 060. And I'm just going to hold the speed as is. And then afterwards, once when we reach this next fix, as you can see, we're going to make this left turn to a heading of 290 degrees. So I'm going to hand fly this departure procedure in which I'm going to level off at 3,000 feet. And then upon reaching that 290 heading, and I'm going to turn the autopilot on and then we'll give ourselves vectors to merit. All right, now I'm gonna level off at 3000. Definitely wanna make this turn before we overfly Teterboro, which is the airport that's in front of, the front of us and slightly off to our left. So now I'm gonna start making this left turn to a heading of 290 and we'll level off right around here. I need to retract the flaps because somehow the auto throttle is struggling to slow the airplane down. So now I need to retract more flaps before I end up breaking them. Flaps up. But yeah, this is a challenging departure procedure to fly out of Newark in which everything has to be done 
rider very quickly. So now I need to probably take control of the speed because now it wants to break the 259 limit. So I'm not going to allow that to happen. And at this point, I might as well keep climbing up to my cruising altitude to flight level 370. So we're going to continue on this left turn to 290. And the climb performance is just absolutely incredible. Climbing almost 4,000 feet per minute right there. If you're not a member, please visit us at qwingsend.com. In just a few minutes, we will be beginning our complimentary meal. All right, so at this point, I can go ahead and turn on the autopilot. Let me set, fix my heading first. We apologize if you do not accept cash. In flight entertainment available on this aircraft. And we'll set up our autopilot. Autopilot on. All right, I'm going to run through my after landing, correction, my after now takeoff checklist, so we'll do that. So landing gear is up, flaps are up, auto brakes are RTO, and at above 10,000 feet, we'll turn off the, the landing light. And we'll get back to the other page. And then now I'm going to start vectoring myself direct to merit, so I'm going to fly a heading of 360 degrees. And this departure procedure obviously makes sense, so that way you don't overfly LaGuardia Airport and be in the way of their departures and arrivals. So pretty much I'm turning away from Manhattan, so that way we can get to Merritt safely. All right, I think at this point it's now it's good enough for me to go to Merritt, so we'll just go direct to the fix. Turn on the LNAV, and above 10,000 feet, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the landing lights and then let the autopilot take control of the speed. I had it at 240 knots for a reason, so that way we don't break the 250 knot limit as we're flying below 10,000 feet. All right, so now at this point, I'm just gonna have the autopilot take control of the speed. Passing 10,000 feet, I'm gonna turn off the landing lights. And that's about it in terms of the climb procedure. So pretty much the rest of this flight is gonna take us across Boston, Canada, crossing the Atlantic Ocean into Europe. So I'm going to end this recording right there for now and I will provide you guys with some cinematics and some music throughout the cruise. So I will see you guys
Welcome back, my fellow viewers. As you can see, we are just about to traverse through England, in which, some reason, the the lights on the mode control panel doesn't work. So that's the reason why I have this flashlight tool MP3D in order to see the mode control panel. But other than that, all the other lights around the airplane are working as we speak. So. As you can see, we step climb to flight level 390, in which now we're going to brief our arrival into Skipple, in which I've checked. ATC is online at the time of the recording, and also I have read extensively through the arrival procedures into Amsterdam. So, I'm going to pull up the Navigraph chart, in which we're going to brief. In this case, it's going to be the Lamzo 2 Alpha arrival into Amsterdam. So, in this case, for arrivals, jet aircraft 250 knots below 10,000 feet, that's obvious, in which we're going to be approaching this fix called Lamzo, in which we need to cross that at or below flight level 230. So, in that case, that's when we will contact Amsterdam radar, in which we will be on the descent as we go along. Then we have Edpas, and then we have Sugol, which is an important fix. We need to cross that at or below flight level 100, or in that case, it could be between flight level 70 and flight level 100. So the reason why you're seeing this, for those of you who fly in the States most of the time, is because the transition altitude for Amsterdam, last time I checked, it was 3,000 feet, which for, which for different countries, they'll have different transition altitudes. And as for the arrival runway, I checked the weather. Winds are coming out from the east. So in that case, we're going to do the ILS runway six. So what's going to happen is, after we pass Sugol, then basically approach control is going to tell us to go direct to Skipple VOR, in which within the 15 nautical mile of the Skipple VOR, we have to slow down to 220 knots. So right before we reach the VOR, then we will get vectors for the approach. So with that being said, we're going to do the ILS runway 6 into Amsterdam, in which as you can see, this is a JEP chart, page 11-1. Frequencies, we're going to set them up as we get closer, in which the localizer frequency will be automatically tuned in the FMS alongside with the final approach course of 058 degrees. So there's our transition altitude, 3,000 feet. And then also, once when established on the ILS, we have to maintain 160 knots until reaching the 4 DME of the localizer or as directed. That's an important fix to keep in mind. And also ILS DME reads zero at runway six threshold. So once when we get vectors for the approach, basically the 6.2 DME of the localizer serves as our final approach fix. And then by the time when we get to 4 DME, this is where we'll start to slow down to our final approach speed in which I haven't determined that yet, but we will get closer. And then we're going to take it down towards our decision altitude of 189 feet MSL. That's 200 feet AGL. Now, the reason why the decision altitude is lower than the decision height is because Amsterdam is one of the few airports in the world whose airport elevation is below sea level. So it's negative 11 feet. So that's the reason why the decision altitude is lower than the decision height. We do have high intensity approach lighting system with red terminating bars and pappies on the left side of the runway. Now, if we have to go miss, we'll climb to 2000 feet on runway heading and then we will let ATC know right away. So. Upon landing at Skipple, so this is runway six. I'm going to try to get off at taxiway Sierra four, where we're going to go to the Delta gates. So 
In that case, we're going to choose gate delta 10, in which we're going to go via alpha 4, actually tell you what, we're going to make a right turn onto Bravo because alpha is actually a one-way taxiway unless otherwise stated by ATC. But it looks like we're going to go to Bravo, alpha 5, and then continue on alpha 5 all the way to gate delta 10. So that's going to be our arrival into Skipple. I'm going to close the Navigraph chart. So as you can see, there's our top of the sign right there. And I will see you guys as we get closer to Amsterdam. Well, welcome back, my fellow viewers. As you can see, we are under Amsterdam radar, in which we just descended below 18,000 feet. Sorry, and we're clear for the LAM. So to you. Alpha That's arrival, in which ATC has cleared us to descend the down to 10,000 feet, in which we have to be at 10,000 before Sugo. So pretty much I might provide like minimum uh, commentary, mainly to focus on communicating with ATC and especially and below 10,000 feet, now, I'm not going to be commentating as much. United 70, descent to flight level 70, after Sugo, direct Shera, Papa and Lima. Down to flight level 70, after Sugo, direct Sierra, Papa Lima for United 70 Heavy. So as you can see, I'm writing down the instructions that ATC is giving us because I'm not used to flying in Europe on Vassim. As you can see, after Sugo, we'll go direct to Skipple. I'll just slow down my descent a little bit so that way we don't go below 7,000. And this would also be a good opportunity for me to slow the airplane down to out of below 250 knots. And also the approach speed is 143 knots. So I was able to set that. United 70, contact triple approach, one to one, decimal two, topics. One to one, decimal two, United 70, heavy. All right, so now we're over to skip all approach. I'm gonna switch the frequency over. And I'm just gonna make sure we have the correct data, which is echo. Skipple approach, United 70 heavy, flight level 116 for flight level 70, we have echo. United 70 heavy, vectors ILS approach, runway 06, info, Foxtrot is now present. We'll expect the ILS runway 6 and we'll get Foxtrot for United 70 heavy. Uh, look, looks like they changed the ILS ILS. So in this case, I'm just going to read the ADIS off the B pilot client. And now at the same time, I got to prioritize flying the plane, so I got to slow down to 240 knots. And right now, we're below 250 knots. Landing light on, runway turn on, lights on. And the QNH is, let's see, 1022, which is hectopascals. Kilo 1-9-er, 60 and 2,000 feet, clear at ILS approach, runway 06 on the heading. 2,000 feet, clear approach. Now we're below 10,000 feet. And Amsterdam approach, United 70 Heavy has Fox Drive. United 70 Heavy, say again. United 70 Heavy has information Fox Drive. Okay, perfect, thank you. I also put this ring right there, which is the 15 the DME is, uh, of the Skipple VOR. Papa, in which by the time when I reach this ring, I have to be below 220 knots. Clear to land, uh, with United 70, descent flight level 40. Down to flight level 40 for United 70 Heavy. Kilo 695, model Unicom, 1 to 2, decimal 8. Have a great flight. All right, let's go ahead and descend. We'll do 1400 feet per minute. 
And also I need to put in the frequency. Ten four nine go. Um, send for one away four. After our tip, uh, but I did not insure them yet. Can you say them again, please? Uh, can I for it down So that way I have to skip the VOR after in there. Papa Alpha Mike. That's important Papa so that way I know at what point to slow down to 220 knots. Kill two five Fox North runway three six left clear for takeoff. Wind zero six zero three one zero. I just gotta watch that speed. Take off ground. Slow down on my descent. Romeo Alpha heading zero three zero clear. And we'll slow to two twenty. Zero six following the circling zero four. Right zero three zero clear ILS. And I can slow down on my descent path a little bit. Five nine or five five identified. Climb flight level one three zero. Level 130, clear to land, wind 06 and crease 10 knots. Clear to land, ILS 6 6 contact ground, one is thanks for the great service and highly good avond, dankjewel. All right, we are on their way and slowing down to 220 knots. And we're going down to 4,000. Hello, can I lift up the cargo 8265, ready for departure, 36 left. Let's go 8265, hello, line up of 836 left. I'm allowed to reduce my rate of descent a little bit more. And directly in front of us, I don't know if you guys can see, that's Amsterdam straight ahead. So what I'll do is I'll throw flaps one. United 70 to right heading 180. Right 180 for United 70 heavy. Okay, and 489 for Paul Mike heading 235. Uh, turning right heading 225. We'll slow to 210. Okay, and 489 after Paul Mike. Okay, after Paul uh, Alpha Mike, and 489. Q and H one zero two two down to two thousand for United seven zero heavy. All right, you can throw in flaps five. And we'll continue our descent down to 2,000 feet. And then also I have to maintain 260 knots until we reach the four DME of the localizer. And now we just passed transition altitude in the Netherlands. So I'm going to reset the uh, barometric pressure to 1022. So in that case, that'll be 3019 in inches in mercury. Okay, now we're at 2,000 feet. So we should be getting another heading instruction pretty soon. United 70, turn left heading 090, clear to ILS approach runway 06. Left 090 and clear for the ILS runway 6 approach for United 70 heavy. So at this point I can go ahead and arm the approach button. This guy switched to the white light, now I can't even tell which button is the approach? Oh, there it is. Cannot even tell which button is the approach switch because the panel is not even illuminated. All right, at this point, I now I need to slow down to around 180 knots or so. I will try to slow down to 160. Cargo 8265 identified, climb flight level 130. So we really need to get that airspeed down. So we'll go flaps 15. And now we're on the okay, intercept angle. Nine, I maintain 250 knots for now. Maintaining 250 knots for Kevin 489. And once when we reach the 4 DME, 
That's going to be Echo Hotel 616. That's when we're going to slow down to our final approach speed. And now we're going to go flaps 20. Even though it's not even on the GPS waypoint, but I would say two miles after this, we'll slow down the final approach speed. So we'll just keep it at 160 for now. All right, so right now we're at flaps 20. I could add more flaps. So we'll do flaps 25. And then once when we get down to final approach speed, 143, we're gonna add five knots to it. So we're gonna be landing 149. All right, looks like the autopilot has intercepted the localizer. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the gear. And we'll go flaps 30. And we're gonna go 149 knots. United 70, runway 06, clear to land, 20, 06, clear to knots. Clear to land, runway 6 for United 70, heavy. California right. 9, it doesn't seem like you're going heading 235, so make a left turn heading 210. Alright, now I'm gonna slow down to final approach speed. Left turning 210 for Kalim 29. Transcalco 8265, monotina, come on to 2 decimal 8, that's great flight. And at this point, I don't need the autopilot anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and kill the autopilot and the auto throttles. There it is. Autopilot is disengaged, and I have manual control of the aircraft. Amsterdam approach, New Zealand 611, uh, descending the flight level 080. And we got geared down three greens, flaps full. Excellent. And approach speed 149. I'm a little bit off. On the left, we have a direct headwind, so we don't need to worry about any crosswind whatsoever. All right, a little high. Just making those small corrections. Still not lined up with the runway, you gotta fix that. Killing 4A, it's Niners, descent 2000 feet, QNH 1022, speed 220 knots. I need to slow down a little bit more. Two, two, zero knots. Actually, two, airspeed two, wise, two, I'm two, okay. Two, Meant to say I need to get back four, onto the glide path. Okay, keeping going, it looks like. Light, crappy light says I'm a little high. I'm just gonna cut the power back a bit more. So there's a discrepancy between the glide slope and the pappy lights. Now my airspeed has dropped a bit. For Tyler, right heading 030, cleared ILS approach, runway 06. 030. Right, and clears for the eye approach. Eye approach, generally 06. Okay, then 49. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. It's probably a rough landing. Came in a little bit too slow towards the end. All right, I'm just going to roll it all the way down to Sierra 4. Okay, I gotta get rid of the auto brakes. So we'll go ahead and turn them off. And let's see, looks like Sierra 3, we're gonna exit. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be taxiing for the next few minutes. So please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captain turns off the fastened seatbelt sign. At that time, please remember to check around your seating area, in the seat pockets, and overhead bins for all personal belongings. And we have exited the runway. All right, so now I'm gonna clean the airplane up, turn off the landing lights, keep the 
turn off lights on, taxi light on, strobes off, flaps are up, speed brakes, I've been I need to retract the speed brakes, and also we're going to set our auto brakes to off. Can afford 9 of them, 06 clear to land, wind 06, 0 degrees. Take QNH 1, 0, 2. Call altitude is fully ready and requesting push and start. Quality 2, information Fox Run is current, QNH 1022, pushback and startup approved. Push and start approved, quality 2. Amsterdam Graham, United 70 Heavy, uh, Taxiway Sierra 3, we'd like to go to stand Delta 10. United 70, welcome to Amsterdam, Taxi Gate Delta 10 via Alpha 5. Delta 10 via Alpha 5 for United 70 Heavy. Alright, so we'll make a right on Bravo and then a left turn onto Alpha 5. Looks like there's somebody there. Looks like it's an Alitalia Airbus right here. Get him 489er. Welcome to Amsterdam. Taxi gate Delta 52. Taxi gate Delta 52. Just gotta make sure the wingtip clearance is good enough so that way I don't hit that Airbus right there. And now it looks like I'm gonna go over to this side, the left hand side. Quality 2, taxi holding planes, runway 36 left at Whiskey 5, cross runway 36 center. It's a nice scenery right there. They even have a fucker jet point, directly in front of you, which has been converted Quality to a two, restaurant, uh, I'll let you know I believe. When you get there, but if you must know already, it will be So now four. it looks like I'm going to have to make this right turn and find where Delta 10 is at. Uh, okay, thank you. Attaching to, um, so this is Delta sorry, 4, three, six, four and, and um, Delta 10 three, should five, be somewhere. Four, um, eight, Actually, three, six, I have six, found the two. gate. Quality 2 negative, add Whiskey 5, cross runway 36 center. That's Delta 8. Oh, okay. Uh, and sorry. it looks Crossing like it's Delta 10 right there. Center, 55, and taxi into 36 left, quality 2. No problem, thank there you. There it is. Super ground channel 124, initial 36 left at 64. KLM 124, no further HC available, Monsoon to come 122 this night. Have a nice flight, bye bye. Hey, now I'm just gonna go a little straight. I think I should be straight enough. Civil ground, it's quality two. Can we use uh, taxiway Quebec or is it a one way? And I'm just gonna keep going a little bit more forward. Yeah, I might have parked it at an angle. I say that's pretty. I think that's pretty much good right there. Don't want to go any taxiway more further. Quebec or is it a one way? All right, so now we're going to oh, uh, go ahead and shut this airplane down. I'm going to turn on the dome forever. lights, so that way I can okay, get rid of the you. flashlight. And we'll turn off our runway turn-off lights and our taxi lights. And the strobes, I turned it off. And I could get rid of this flashlight. And now we're going to shut the engines down. And then get GSX to start deboarding. And then what we'll do is open up our cargo doors. And then get the jetway going. Well then my fellow viewers, that concludes the flight. So if you have enjoyed the flight, feel free to hit the like button and feel free to hit the subscribe button, JRV96, where I'll be posting Flight Simulator 2020 and P3D content usually every weekend. So, as you can see, these are the first of many flights that I'm going to upload to the channel. So, with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys on the next flight.